how do we process holiness as fathers, as human beings, right, as leaders, how does it work out in our lives? So, um, let's just start with any reflections that you may have, and maybe you can speak to the subject. Yeah, thanks. Uh, holiness, wow. That's a big topic, it's a big word. Hey, for me, holiness means the otherness, the parts of parts of life that are completely other than me or the experience that's completely other. I, I think about this passage with Moses and he has this encounter. He's not afraid of the fire. He, he's actually curious. He goes over to the bush, but it's when God speaks and lets him know who he is that he becomes um, frightened because there's something that's so other than, other than himself. And, um, that's my experience in my life in, in, in moments of holiness is the encounter of something that is so much bigger than anything I could ever imagine or know or ever experience. You got me thinking. When it was bigger than him and, and um, it also uh, summoned him in a way, it said to him, take off your shoes. It may mean something. He has to give up something of himself in the presence of that otherness. Can't be protected. Wow. Can't be guarded. You can't be. You can't. You can run from it. But if you're going to be in the otherness, you're going to be. You're going to be as you are. Uh, the Old Testament that language too for taking off your shoes is as intimate as it can be. Um, that's that ultimate symbol of in, of intimacy or our feet. And um, I think that's what God is saying to him. If you're going to abide with me, you're going to be. You're going to be with me. There's not going to be anything left of you. It's going to be an all-consuming fire, and I'm going to use you as as I as I want to use you, and and if you trust in me, you're going to be overwhelmed. But also, what's exciting is that Moses had just been running from uh, Pharaoh because uh, he had killed the Egyptian um, slave master, and in a way, uh, do you see it as being somewhat like God is saying to him, "Okay, quit running." You've confronted the elderness now. Take it off. Quit running. Uh, you know, sort of that symbol of, okay, stop it here. The stop it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jump in, Jeff. I'm, I'm not trying to. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, I think he's saying, you know, quit running. But notice where he sends him. He sends him right back to the greatest threat. Wow. Um, and, and, and I think that's, in my life, the way Christ works, the way God works. He sends me back to those places of greatest threat. So in, in this text, he sends him back to Pharaoh. He says, I'm going to send you back. Pharaoh knows who he is. I mean, he, he, he lived with Pharaoh. Pharaoh wanted to, his desires to kill him. That's why I ran away. He says, I'm going to send you back. And um, it, it's like, it, it's, it's, it's like um, Paul when he's blinded and he goes to Ananias, and, 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 and God says, Ananias, I want you to do this for him. I'm, I'm, Paul's going to come, and Ananias has got to be thinking, you got to be crazy. Why would I help him get his eyesight back, and he might kill me? So, so for me, it's those places of greatest where my most vulnerable, that God is not only going to heal me, but he's going to put me back in it. Because those are the places where I know I, I, know I have to trust him, in him. I can't do it on my own. And the other major event that we think of for holiness in the Old Testament is the giving of the commandments, and they both happen on the mountain. Mm -hmm. There's something about encountering God and God's holiness that is a mountaintop experience, that he draws us to the mountain, he calls us to the mountain in order to prepare us for where he, he wants us to go. Moses started off that experience, he was curious. He was kind of excited. He wanted to see what this thing was. He wanted to explore it. Um, and when he encountered God, when he encountered the holiness and the presence of God, and that, that otherness of God, the first thing he wants to do is find ways why he can't complete the task that God has for him. Mm -hmm. um, he was okay with taking his shoes off, but to be sent back down to the valley, to be sent back to Egypt, to go back to Pharaoh, to go back to God's people, to respond to what God has told him to do, became a challenge for him instantly. Hmm. You know, also, the otherness of God... Uh, is beautiful. It's attractive. You know, so oftentimes people are attracted to the beauty of God, the glory of God, the majesty of God, the blessings of God. You know, God is attractive, 
right? But then God summons us to enjoy that, to participate. But there's something we must do. And in this case, he had to take off his shoes. Yeah, right? Anyway, just a thought. What well, if we could back up real quick? Um, you said something I, I wanted to get maybe Jim's input on when you talked about the attractiveness or beauty of God's holiness. Because uh, that's kind of a big thing. Jonathan Edwards, um, part of the Great Awakening, arguably one of the greatest revivals that this country's ever seen, talked about that. And he said that one who truly loves God must delight in God's holiness, not delight in any other attribute, for no other attribute is truly lovely without it. I wonder if we might, before we press forward, just talk about that or so share some thoughts on the beauty of God's holiness. Yeah, what's beautiful? Uh, and that's a really good question. What, what is beauty? How do, how, do I, how do I know something's beautiful? How do you know it? I think it moves you, causes you, it draws something from you. Um, a desire, um, a love, um, and to be overwhelmed in a sense, to see something that's beautiful. I think the beauty of God always compels us to action. Um, I think if it's beauty for the sake of beauty, it's not of God. I think uh, the beauty of God is this call to respond. God gives us something to do when we encounter His beauty. Um, our purpose until Revelation lives itself out and we, we're, all, we're all there with the 24 elders. Our call is to respond to the beauty of, of God in the ways that He offers for us, I think.